today. We are in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. If you got your Bibles, you can be turning to uh, verse 18. We're going to look, be looking at 18 through 25, um, and that's where we're going to be. Have you ever, uh, yeah, I can't do this. So uh, have you ever, uh, have you ever explained a, like, like say, let's back up a second. You ever had a great idea? Anybody ever had a great idea? Yeah. Come on, hands. There's like four of you in the room. Anybody ever had a good idea? Yes. yes. Have you ever explained that to somebody else? Did you ever get to look like it's not so great, right? I, I was watching TikTok a few years ago, uh, and I saw this, this sermon illustration. This guy had a globe, right? And he was explaining, why did God say that he forgets your sins as far as the east is for the west and not the north and south? I'd never really thought about that, but I, 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 he's explaining. And he said, listen, if you go south globally, you will get to a place where you will end up going north again. Do y'all get that? Not so with east and west. If you go east globally and you keep an easterly bearing, you will always be going east. I know it's hard for you. I know you've only had one cup of coffee. You'll get there. You'll get, it's kind of, it's kind of a head scratcher. And I was like, this is crazy. That's why, I get, and I explained it to this, I explained it to my, a good friend of mine. And you know what he said to me? He said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> right. That's the dumbest thing. I, 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 uh, I've wasted a lot of time with Shark Tank. Any, any Shark Tank lovers in the room? You don't have to be a lover. Do you like Shark Tank? There you go. I don't love it. I like to watch it. You get the, the, the drift of the show. It's, it's uh, entrepreneurs with their company, and they, and they pitch their company, and they pitch their product, right, to these, to these wealthy investors in hopes that they'll reach a deal and they'll scale their company. There's one guy, he's got a bald head. They call him Mr. Wonderful, right? And he's, uh, I'm just going to say it, he's a jerk, right? Typically, typically he's a jerk. Um, I'm sure he's a great guy. It's probably is just his on-camera persona, right? But he has this saying like these people, and it's always, listen, it's always the most miraculous product or company ever. Of course, the person that owns it, that invented it is like pitching this product and it's great. It's miraculous. It's like the best thing since the Stanley Cup finals. That's a head scratcher too, isn't it? So uh, I'm here and you're here, so you have to listen to me. Uh, and so uh, it's always the best thing, right? And, and, and sometimes Mr. Wonderful, if he's not catching it, he will say this, I think you need to take it out behind the shed and kill it. And that's harsh, isn't it? A person who has built this company from nothing, who has invented a product that maybe is miraculous. And, and, and if one investor, I think you ought to kill that thing because it's, it's, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. That's harsh. Paul is going to, Paul is going to give us some words in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting with 18. It's miraculous or it's foolish. Stay with me. Mirac say miraculous. Miraculous or it's foolish. foolish. It's like Shark Tank today. It's miraculous or it's foolish. Listen to what Paul says, he says, for the message of the cross, somebody say message. message, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, amen, amen. it is the power of God. Moving on, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Amen, church? We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. 
But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Pray with me, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, Father. Open our eyes, open our hearts, and let us figure out what you're trying to tell us today. And all God's people said, amen. It's miraculous or it's foolish. Crosses are everywhere, are they not? There's one here. I have one in my office. There's one on this uh, north side of the building. Uh, you probably don't see it very often because you just don't see it. You're not focused on, on that, but they're everywhere. There's uh, lots of crosses over here in the cemetery right across the street and right across the parking lot. Crosses are everywhere. Uh, uh, we, we have them on necklaces. We have them on our, our clothing, right? We have them on, uh, on bumper stickers. We have them everywhere. There's crosses. And, 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 and the idea, uh, sometimes, um, anybody ever remember watching the old black and white uh, vampire shows? Anybody? I know you're dating yourself, but that's okay. We ain't going to tell nobody. Hands if you ever watched a black and white vampire show. Wow. There's like... Either y'all are liars or nobody had no money for a TV. I don't know what it is, right? But you remember those, right? When, when the good guy, when the, when, the, when the vampire was just about to get what he wanted, what did, what did the guy do? He pulled up a cross, right? Remember, remember that? Yes, and there was hissing and there was, you know, it was like, it was like, it was like death to the vampire. But the cross really doesn't have any power does it a cross two pieces of wood joined together I like guess I was like mm, 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 yeah, like this yeah really there's no power in a cross is there anybody anybody is there power in two pieces of wood put together will will that thing save you no no but Paul he says this he says he says the message of the cross he says the message of the cross. He says the message of the cross, right? He says it's foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God. That Greek word power is dynamis, and that's where we get the word dynamite in the English language. It is the power of God for those who are being saved. It's miraculous or it's foolish. And so I the idea today, like there's two questions that I want to ask you. And we got, who likes to go through a lot of Bible verses? Anybody? Wow, I'm in a bad place today. Because <laughs> we got a bunch. You better tidy up, put your seatbelt on, right? Uh, we got a lot of scripture to look through today. But I want you to just focus a little bit, focus a little bit. Uh, can nod, nod your head if we can, if we can stay laser focused for the next uh, 28 minutes. Can we do that? All right, okay, here we go. So there's two questions. What is the message of the cross? As Christians, we need to know, right? We need to know what the message of the cross is. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? To know, to know what the message of the cross is. And then we're gonna ask the question, where is the wall, right? Where is the wall that divides the miraculous from foolishness? Where is that? That's what we're gonna find out today. So the message of the cross, the message of the cross has to start here. And Philippians, Paul writes in Philippians chapter two, verses five through eight, he says this. Everybody ready? Say you're ready. ready. Have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, who being very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage but rather he made himself nothing. He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Church, finish it. Even death on a cross. Even death on a cross. Now, the first thing we have to figure out here is the message of the cross is not easy. It's not simple right? We, we, we see this verse and it's like, Jesus, 
God's son becomes a man, born to a woman, miraculous, is it not? Taking the very nature of a servant, he says that he made himself nothing. Now, it's not like Jesus, like, changed jobs, right? Hey, I got a new job, right? God's letting me change my bedroom. I'm going to the fourth floor. No, no, that's ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about the God of the universe being made in human likeness, making himself nothing. You know what the Greek word for nothing is? It means nothing. Nothing. The creator God that spoke into existence everything that you see, that you smell, that you touch, that you feel, made himself nothing. Made himself nothing nothing. It's not easy, right? The message of the cross isn't easy. It's not simple. He made himself nothing. Then we have to go to Colossians. We got to go to Colossians chapter 1, 19 and 20. And here's the message of the cross, right? That's what we're trying to find out. For God was pleased. Somebody say that word. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Who is him? That is Jesus Christ. And through him to reconcile himself to all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood, somebody finish it. The The message of the cross is not easy. But here's the next thing that kind of blows your mind. The message of the cross, the message of Jesus coming to earth, becoming nothing, becoming a servant, pleased his father. That's crazy, isn't it? It pleased God what Jesus did for you, what Jesus did for me. And that's how John can write in John 3, 16. Let's say it, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only, some people are gonna say begotten, aren't they, Karen, right? Yeah, his begotten son is one, that whosoever, what? Will have Somebody act like you're in church to say amen. amen. Right? John 3, 16. The message of the cross is miraculous. It's miraculous. Hebrews, the Hebrew writer ch- says in verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 22, he says, in fact, he says, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed by or with blood and without the shedding of blood. Somebody say without. Without the shedding of blood, there is no Wow, did you hear that? Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So the message of the cross is sacrifice, isn't it? It's not easy, right? It pleased God. It's all about sacrifice. Romans 5, chapter 10 says this. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but just stay with me. I'm trying to help you. For if... While we were God's enemies, this is what Paul writes to the church in Rome, we were reconciled him, to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved in his life? The message of the cross is miraculous. It is miraculous. You can't look at it any other way, Christians, right? It is miraculous. We go on here in, in, in that passage, and it says that when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us our sins. Listen to this. This, is good. this gets great. Having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away and then nailing it to the cross and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them on the cross. You had a debt, Christian. You had a debt that could not be paid, that you couldn't ever pay that you couldn't ever put together enough capital in your life to pay this debt. And scripture says, the Bible says, the God of heaven says that he took that debt and he nailed it to the cross of Jesus. That is 
miraculous. That's miraculous. Are you kidding me? A debt that I owe. A debt that I owe that I could never, ever, 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 ever. You just keep putting evers in there. I could never repay. I could never be good enough. I could never do enough right things. And God was pleased in this message of the cross to nail it to the cross of Jesus. Pretty happy about that. I'm pretty happy about that, right? Hebrews, Hebrews chapter two, verse 14, the Hebrew writer says this. He says this, since the children have flesh and blood. He too, who is he? That's Jesus. He too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him. Now listen, you gotta look there. You gotta look there. Is him capitalized? No. That means it's not, it's not, a, it's, it's not an important person, right? It's not an important person, right? They might break the power of him who holds the power of death. And he he tells you right there, that is the devil. You see, the devil has the power of death. But Jesus has broken his power. Isn't it so funny, church? Listen, we we, we, we give... I'm just going to say it. We give our enemy, our spiritual enemy, he has a name. It's Satan. It's the devil, right? That's who it is. And we give him so much credit. And we're like, oh, uh, you hear people say, man, the enemy, the enemy is working hard. The enemy is working hard. Listen, he has no power over you. If you have, you got to hear this. You got to hear this believer. You got to hear this brother brother in Christ, sister in Christ. He has no power over you. I always think of uh, uh, Gandalf. You have no power here, right? Yeah, it's true. He has no, all he has, listen, listen, you got to hear this. All he has is a lie. Jesus says in the gospels that he is a liar. He says he is the father of lies. And when he speaks, he speaks his native tongue, which is 100% lies. You've been listening to that? Whoever, anybody in the room, can 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 you relate to me? Do you ever hear that lie about you? You ever hear it inside in the inner, in the inner ear? I mean, right now you can't hear it because all the cicadas, but, you know, (laughs) most of the time you can, right? There you go. You guys are out there. That's nice. I'll be here all day. (laughs) But you've heard heard that murmuring, haven't you? You're no good. God doesn't love you. God would never die for you. You're so bad. He doesn't really know what you've done. You ever hear that? Sure. I think we all have. First Peter says this, 2.24, 1 Peter, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. And he says, by his wounds, you or we, you have been healed. Now, does, does Peter write in there that by his wounds, you have been partially healed? You were on your way to healing. No, he says, by his wounds, you, right? You, believer, you, Christian, you are healed. And when God says you are healed, what are you? Healed. You are healed. You're not, some, you're not some hospital unit. Right? You're not, you're not suffering from this crazy infection that you're never going to get better. No. Scripture says you are healed. 100%. My question today is why don't we believe that? Why don't we believe it? When, when Scripture says the message of the cross is, is that you're healed by what Jesus did for you. Guys, we, we have to start 
believing it. Well, let's, let's, let's continue on. Uh, Hebrew writer says this, Hebrews 2, uh, 10, 2, 2, verse 9. Listen to this. But we see Jesus, who was made, a, made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. And by the grace of God, he might taste death for What's the last word of that, of that verse? Everyone. everyone. The obvious joke would be the Greek for everyone means, everyone. there you go. It's everybody, right? It's, it's everyone. It's everyone. Jesus tasted death so that you wouldn't have to taste spiritual death. The cross, the message of the cross is miraculous. It's all the other descriptive things of uh, the words, amazing, awesome, whatever you want to put in there. But it is miraculous. It is miraculous. I got one amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It's miraculous. But, he, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Jesus died for you. He canceled your debt. The enemy has no power over you except for lies that you may or may not hear and you might want to choose to believe, but you can't believe it. You can't listen to it because your debt's been canceled. He has no power. He has no power. And then Hebrews, well, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this first message of the cross uh, uh, point. Hebrews chapter 10, uh, 10 through 15. Here's what it says. And by that will... And by that will, we have been made holy. Somebody say holy. holy. We have been made holy. Who thinks they're holy? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we only have like three people that are acknowledging the redeeming work of Jesus. Who is holy in the room? Come on. Come on, there you go, there you go. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. Somebody say that, once for all. That's once for all, right? Day after day, listen to this, day after day. Now think about the Old Testament times with the, with the Levites, the priests, doing what they're doing uh, in the temple. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices, a pigeon, a dove, a turtle dove, whatever it is, a ram, an ox. He offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Moving on. But, listen to this, but when, the, when this priest, who is this priest? It's Jesus, it's King Jesus. When this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Moving on. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For for by one sacrifice he has made for by one sacrifice he has been he has made we're going to say by one sacrifice he has made those who are being made holy now you know you're not perfect i've been around some of you some of you think you do you are that's a joke you know you're not perfect. I was, if I was to ask, who thinks they're perfect? And no, nobody was hand, no, nobody's hands. Nobody's hand would go up, right? But if we ask who is perfect in the economy of God, in the kingdom of God, all of our hands probably ought to go up, right? By a sacrifice made once, he has made perfect forever. Guys, listen, this, this is, you have to get this. You have to get this. We can't, we can't make any headway for the kingdom of God until you believe this. 
How many people do we see? Do we see all the time? How many people? How many Christian people all the time? They look so sad, right? They look so sad and then like beat up. And I, I had a crazy, crazy bad week and I, I failed and I did this and I just can't seem to get over this. And I'm not, listen, I'm making fun, but, but, but it's for a purpose. Listen, no one wants to be around that. And Jesus didn't die for you and me to act like we're some whip pup. Because we are children of the king who have been redeemed and we've been made perfect for. That's what, that's how we have to live, right? We, and, and you have to believe it. You have to believe it. Yeah, you're not perfect. You're gonna have, you're gonna have bad days, spiritually speaking, when you struggle with sin. But Jesus, his death on the cross, the message of the cross is, is that his his sacrifice made you perfect forever. Does God lie? No, no. Folks, we need to get in touch with that type of attitude, with that type of, of, of how you view yourself. Because if you keep, just like, just like the devil is the father of lies, if you keep listening to the lie that you're telling yourself, you will never have a day victorious. The message of the cross is miraculous. I got 10 minutes to finish this up. Y'all are in trouble. <laughs> For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. And okay, so the message of the cross is miraculous. So now we have to ask the question, where is the wall? Where is the wall that divides the miraculous message of the cross and foolishness. Paul says in the very first verse we read in, in verse 18, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. There is a, there is a, uh, Paul goes back to the old Testament. Uh, where, where's that at? He says, for in, in verse 19 uh, of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he says, for it is written. And he goes back and he quotes an Old Testament verse uh, out of, out of uh, the prophet Isaiah. And it says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. That's what Paul, he's a, he's a good, he's a good Jewish boy and he knows his Old Testament and he throws it in right here. But if you go back to Isaiah, right? If you go back to Isaiah where he gets this verse, Isaiah chapter 29, 9 through 16, here's what Isaiah says. He says, be stunned and amazed. Blind yourself and be sightless. Be drunk, but not from wine. Stagger, but not from beer. The Lord has brought over you a deep sleep he has sealed your eyes, the prophets, has covered your heads, the seers. For you, this whole vision is nothing but words sealed on a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read and say, read this, please, they will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read and say, read this, please, they will answer, I don't know how to read. The Lord says, these people come near me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship, their worship of me is based on mere human rules that have been taught. Therefore, he says, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. And here's where Paul grabs that and he throws it into 1 Corinthians. The wisdom of the wise will perish and the intelligence of the intelligent, I will vanish. Woe to those, he goes on, woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us? Who will know? They'll know. They won't know. They'll, you guys watch it on social media, right? They're going to know. Who will know? You turn things upside down as if the potter, get this, as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, you did not make me. Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing. That sounds like our culture, doesn't it? 
Huh? Come on. It's okay. I'm not going to get political on you. We're just speaking truth out of God's word. That sounds like the world we live in, especially here in the good old U.S. of A. You made me wrong. You didn't make me. I choose my own destiny. On and on and on and on. Now here's the problem. Yes, we can we can admit and we can see that this sounds like our our culture. This sounds like the America that I live in. And what's the church do? Right? We, we, listen, I, we have the LGBTQ plus group. And they don't think, they, they think God messed up. They think God didn't make them the way they were supposed to be made, as the Bible says. And listen, I'm not going to get political with you, right? But it sounds like, it sounds like that kind of stuff. And, and then the church, right? What's the church do? We double down and we get angry and we get mad, don't we? And we post like all caps on social media and we make them the enemy. And we say, you don't belong here, and you're wrong, and you need to repent or you're going to go to hell. And there may be a nugget of truth to that, but we can't get people who are far away with that attitude. Can't. We just read that that, that Jesus has done his work, and he's sitting at the right hand of God, and he sits down, and he's waiting for his enemies to become his footstool. Listen, it's not, is it DEFCON? What is, how's the DEFCON uh, thing? Is it DEFCON 5? Okay, that's like the worst, right? It ain't DEFCON 5, folks. He's in control. He's in control. We just have to do what he's asked us to do. Where's the wall? Here's where we want to get to, right? Here's where we want to get to. Matthew 16, 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, get this, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Now go pull, pull the back, the, the, the first verse there of that passage. He says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross. Listen, to the first century reader, to the first century writer, if you heard cross, there was only one word that meant that that, that meant because the Romans had, perf- had perfected this thing and the cross meant what? It meant death. Like sure, like if you got hung on a cross, you died. No ifs, ands, or buts. So when the first century readers, when we read it, we, tell you, we gotta take up our cross. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do, you know, we don't, we don't give this a lot, of, a lot of thought. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. It means, get this, it means that you have to die to yourself. that you lean 100% of your life on King Jesus. Where he wants you to go, what he wants you to say, what you're gonna do with your life. I know this sounds strange because we have this American culture built into us. We just wanna, uh, we just wanna be free and we wanna be happy. Listen, we follow the King of Kings. We have to die to ourselves. We have to die to ourselves, And I think the wall, right? Jesus teaches right here in, in Matthew's gospel. The wall is at the, is at the place where people have to choose, am I going to die to myself today? And when you don't, or when you won't, the message of the cross is foolishness. And I'm going to end with this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4 through 6. The God, listen to this. The God, and it is a little G, right? It's not a big G. 
It's not big G God, it's little g God, and that means it is our spiritual enemy. The God of this age has blinded the minds. Get this, 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 is, this, is, this is paramount right here. Has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they, somebody say that word, they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For what we preach, listen, what we preach is not ourselves, but it's Jesus Christ as Lord, amen church? and ourselves as your servants. Who is your there? It's all those people who think that the message of the cross is foolish. Somebody say amen. We don't preach ourselves, we preach Christ Jesus as Lord. Go back to that verse. As Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus sake. That's what we do, church. Moving on. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts. Somebody say amen. Made his light shine in our hearts to give us light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. You want to know why? You want to know why? God has, God has allowed Satan, the enemy, to blind people in this world to the message of the cross. And then God says this, I'm gonna up the ante for you. I'm gonna give my light, my knowledge to my believers. We have a a mission statement that we are the light that leads the world to Jesus. Listen, those people who think that the cross is foolish will never see the light if you don't live it for them. Woo! It just got real, didn't it? If you don't live it for them, if you don't live it for them, and I've become lazy sometimes in my spirituality where I'm like, "Uh, listen, the Holy Spirit's just gonna invite people to smile as a Christian church. No, maybe he can if he wants to. But what is going to make a difference? is when you live your life that's lit up by the Holy Spirit in front of people who think the message of the cross is foolishness. And we show people, not just show them, we live our victorious life right there in front of them. And they gotta think, what is wrong with those people? Why are they so happy? It's not all going right for them. They work by you. They live by you. They're related to you, right? Why are they so happy? Nothing brings them down. The message of the cross is miraculous. It's time we show people.